is BRICS becoming the new United Nations? The reason we are asking that question is because ahead of the BRICS summit later this month, Russia, which chairs the BRICS group this year, has called on its partners to create an alternative to the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. Why is that, you ask? Because it is mostly controlled by the West. So basically, Russia has proposed that an alternative to the IMF be established to try and counter political pressure from Western countries. Established with the intention of being a geopolitical and geoeconomic counterweight to the West, BRICS is fast emerging as a formidable bloc with economic might. Here's what Russia is proposing essentially. Russia is proposing altering the mechanisms for cross-border payments among BRICS countries. This way the members can bypass the global financial system. How will that help, you ask? It will help protect these economies from the effects of sanctions imposed by the Western countries. So what is Russia suggesting BRICS do instead? Creating a network of commercial banks within BRICS countries that can enable transactions in local currencies. And this would, in a way, lessen reliance on the US dollar and other major currencies that are controlled by the global financial system. By focusing on using local currencies, Russia aims to create a more self-sufficient financial infrastructure that is resistant to sanctions. The question is what Russia is proposing, is it possible? And to answer that, we need to first ask, what does BRICS really represent? It represents emerging market economies of the world, countries that for so, for so long have been marginalized in a way by the West. What started out as five countries today represents some of the biggest decision makers of the world economy now. And the list of countries joining the bloc is also growing. Have a look at these numbers on your screen for now. According to data by the World Bank, BRICS comprises 41% of the world's population, 24% of the world's GDP and over 16% share in world trade. These are significant numbers. And with more countries joining hands, a larger BRICS essentially has the potential to challenge the dominance of existing global institutions. Uh, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, these are institutions that aim to help all, but these are institutions strongly influenced by the West. A growing BRICS Plus also gives emerging markets the opportunity to align on global topics. Not only does it open up new and exciting economic opportunities for these countries, it also brings them to the decision-making table. And together, these countries can have a greater say on what happens around the world, something that for so long these countries have not been able to do. And why shouldn't they? BRICS countries have been drivers of economic growth after all. They have come together to deliberate on important political security and economic issues. Not just that, BRICS bloc also has for long advocated for reforms of international structures, including the United Nations. And what's more, population-wise, BRICS includes India and China, the world's two most populous countries. Even with demographic, political, economic differences, BRICS basically represents what can be called as unity in diversity. Now, what is it that the bloc demands? In recent years, countries from BRICS Alliance and Global South have pushed for major reforms at the United Nations. Their argument is the United Nations is overly domina dominated by Western countries, particularly by the West. And amid multiple conflicts around the world and the evolving global landscape, the United Nations has faced a variety of, criti of criticisms. It has been criticized for alleged inefficiency, ineff in ineffect ineffectiveness, lack of transparency, perceived biases, also its inability in a way to broker peace. And as far as the IMF is concerned, the impact of its loans has been widely debated. Critics argue that the loans enable member countries to pursue reckless domestic economic policies, knowing that if needed, the IMF will bail them out. And this safety net, in a way, delays reforms. It creates long-term dependency. That's not even all. IMF's conditions have also been widely debated. In fact, critics contend 
that the IMF's prescriptions provide remedies that may not help all countries. This, this reduces economic growth in a way, deepens and prolongs financial crises, creating hardships for the poorest people in borrowing countries. And in light of all of this, it's only fitting that Russia, as a BRICS member, proposes an alternative with BRICS forward-looking agenda in place. The question is, can it replace the UN's stronghold? To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.